to Saguaro National Park. This park consists of two districts, the Saguaro West Tucson Mountain District and the Saguaro East Rincon Mountain District. The two areas, separated by the city of Tucson, are about 30 miles apart. Together they preserve over 91,000 acres of the Sonoran Desert, including the park's namesake, the Saguaro Cactus. Many feel that the best time to visit Saguaro National Park is October through April, when daytime temperatures reach 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and nighttime temperatures may be below freezing. The hottest season extends from May through September, with average temperatures exceeding 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Even then, nighttime temperatures can drop by as much as 30 degrees Fahrenheit. In the Rincon Mountains, it is even cooler. Rainy seasons generally occur twice a year, July through August and December through January. There can also be short but violent thunderstorms July through September and gentle rains from January to March. Otherwise, sunshine prevails in this national park. The saguaro cactus has been called the monarch of the Sonoran Desert, a supreme symbol of the American Southwest and a plant with personality. It is renowned for the variety of odd all too human shapes it assumes, shapes that inspired wild and fanciful imaginings. Since 1933, this extraordinary giant cactus has been protected within Saguaro National Park. Preserved within Saguaro National Park are other members of the Sonoran Desert community. These include other cactus species, desert trees and shrubs, and animals. In lushness and variety of life, the Sonoran Desert far surpasses all other North American deserts, and yet it is one of the hottest and driest regions on the continent. We have already mentioned that summer midday temperatures commonly climb above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Less than 12 inches of rain falls in a typical year. Between the summer and winter rainy seasons, it's not unusual for two months to pass without a drop of rain. Plants and animals able to survive in this environment with adaptations specifically designed for desert survival make up one of the most interesting and unusual ecosystems in the United States. It has been jokingly said that the saguaro starts to think about reproducing about the same time that most human beings start to think of retirement. Indeed, the plant sports its first flowers at about 50 to 60 years of age. It happens around May 1st. Although blooming might start a couple of weeks earlier in lower elevations and two weeks later at higher elevations. The saguaro's flowers open late in the evening on the tips of the main stem that sits on the tips of the cactus's arms. None stay around long. The same flower that blossoms in the cool of midnight will die in the sun the following afternoon. But within those few hours, the saguaro is a hub of activity, a grand central station for hungry pollinators. Bats arrive first, drawn by the flower's mother of pearl glow, so bright it's visible even under starlight. But under moonlight, the flowers shine like fluorescent bulbs. These beacons attract the lesser long-nosed bat and the Mexican long-tongued bat to feed on its nectar and pollen. Both the gilded flicker and the Gila woodpecker are birds that commonly build nests in the saguaro cacti. The excavations they do are calloused over by hard tissue that the cactus develops on the inside walls of these nests. The nests may later be occupied by owls. The top of the 
saguaro seen here has developed a crest. Cresting is basically the result of a mutation, and it happens in many plants. Scientists call this phenomenon fossiation. During fossiation, instead of the cells on the growing tip dividing in symmetrical fashion and making a rounded stem, they divide laterally, causing the plant to grow sideways at the top. In the saguaro, this mutation creates a visually captivating fan-like effect that can range up to nine feet wide. cactus seen here is the fishhook barrel cactus. It is also called the compass cactus because it tends to lean south towards the sun. This and similar species can live up to 100 years. Spines are said to cripple a horse unless they are treated the same day. Both the fishhook barrel cactus and other species of barrel cacti can be used as a source of water in emergencies. Unlike other cactus, which contain significant amounts of oxalic acid and are hence poisonous if one tries to obtain water from them, barrel cacti are largely devoid of oxalic acid and hence one can get safe, though bitter tasting, water from them. According to some, the systematics of the pink flower hedgehog cactus now include what were previously varieties of Echinocereus fasciculatus, variety fasciculatus, and variety Boyce thompsonii. These are both rare cacti, so precise distribution information is masked. Both are treated as separate species here. It is notable that Native Americans ate the raw fruits of this cactus species. The stems were pit roasted and eaten, and the fruits were eaten when dried.
Cocotillo is not a true cactus. For much of the year, the plant appears to be an arrangement of large, spiny dead sticks, although closer examination reveals that the stems are partly green. With rainfall, the plant quickly becomes lush with small, ovate leaves, which may remain for weeks or even months. We see it here in bloom. rabbit, the desert cottontail does not form social burrow systems. When compared with other members of its family, it is notable that it is very tolerant of other individuals in its vicinity. The elf owl makes its home in cavities of the saguaro that have been abandoned by the gilded flicker and the gila woodpecker. The elf owl is the world's smallest owl species. Its weight ranges from one-sixth to just under one-quarter of a pound, with females being slightly heavier. The elf owl diet is comprised almost entirely of insects and other arthropods, such as spiders. It sometimes takes small snakes and rodents. Four subspecies of elf owl are recognized. Active at night, elf owls can be found in various parts of the Saguaro National Park. Much larger than the elf owl, the western screech owl attains weights from just under three quarters of a pound to over two pounds. 
Not generally active, the diet of the western screech owl is mostly insects and other arthropods, but the species also takes small mammals, birds, frogs, and reptiles. Winter food is mainly small mammals and birds. The western screech owl hunts from a perch, but also flies after prey in the air. Speedy zebra-tailed lizard has a long flat tail and long slender legs. It prefers hard soils with few plants. When at rest, it often wags its banded black and white tail that gives the zebra-tailed lizard its name. This behavior is likely used to draw attention away from the vulnerable head to the breakaway tail. Thus, predators are cheated from eating the entire lizard.
figure out what they were. Yeah.